Okay, for um, this uh, message that I want to talk about is regarding the attacks of the enemy. And uh, I, I see that a lot of, if God is using you, God will uh, work through you and you will be in the, in the supernatural realm. You'll be like a, a fire, right? There, there'll be so much anointing on you. And Satan is going to try to do everything he can to stop you because he knows that a man who submitted to the will of God is going to accomplish the will of God. And that means that souls will be saved and Satan doesn't want that because when God wants to do something, it's going to be a, a big transformation for the nation, a big transformation for the world. And right now, I know that God is raising up an army in Pakistan for the kingdom of God and also positioning Christians in very specific places of influence, even in the police department. Um, but anyway, Satan is trying to stop Christians from having influence in this country because the Bible says that blessed is the, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, right? So the gospel will go forth, the spirit of God will move forth, people get saved and delivered, and Satan does not want that. And Satan is roaming around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And he's definitely looking for the weak Christian uh, who he knows, he knows their heart, right? Um, so... This, he knows. He knows all your. He knows all of our weaknesses. And he, and he, he knows all of our weaknesses, and he's, he's going. He's going to try to uh, capitalize on those weaknesses. So God has to really mold those things out of you, so that Satan cannot uh, come and use you. Anyways, Satan knows our weaknesses already, um, and this is where uh, you need to be close to God because God, where those weaknesses are, God has to replace. He has to put His truth there. Because Satan will always come with a lie. Usually he'll come with he'll come with a lie on you, uh, and that lie will with that lie manifests in your mind. Then it will when the right time comes where your test will be there. Then that seed that's been planted in your mind will start to bear fruit, and then you're unable to discern the will of God, and then you're you're gonna fall down. All right. So you have to make sure that you are storing God's word. And also that you have the wisdom to use the word of God. So when a time of attack comes, you can discern the voice of God and the voice of Satan. Understand that even Satan came with the scripture, but the application of the scripture was wrong. Uh, he, he told Jesus to, to jump off the top of the temple, right? He says, because he says that the angels will, will, God will pick him up, will protect him, will not uh, hit his foot on a stone. Satan used the scripture. But as a misapplication of scripture, he twists the scripture too. And uh, also in the garden, we see with Eve, she was deceived by Satan, right? And uh, she was deceived, and it says that uh, the fruit was good to the eyes, and so she ate it, right? It was, it was pleasing to the eyes. And he lied to her, saying that you cannot touch any other fruit, right? And so he tried to get her away from the clear command of God, like not to eat of the fruit of, of do not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But he got her to do it through half lies. Uh, did God really say that you shouldn't do this? And like you see this conversation unfolding and that's, that's the battle is here, it's in the mind, right? So we have to make sure, understand that you need to make sure that you know God, you know your father's heart, his personality. You also know his righteousness, you know the fear of the Lord because Satan will come to you with scripture Right, And if you don't know the heart of God behind the scripture, then you will misapply the scripture in the way that you think. And then you're, he's going to destroy you. And that's going to, that's definitely will happen. Um, that's how a lot of these false sex Christianity come up, right? It's a lot of deception in the, in the church and destruction of things and people and relationships. And the main thing he, he wants to go after is your relationship with God. He wants you to separate he wants to separate you from your relationship with God and he would he wants you to believe that uh, if you make if you if you do something wrong or you make a mistake or you've sinned that you've been cut off like you're nothing, you're worthless, like you can't go back to God. He's, he 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 there's he put the seed in there, right? And then you we we make a mistake or we do something wrong that may not be pleasing to the Lord and then that false understanding of who God is spreads into our mind and it puts us into a place of a lockdown, right? But Jesus heard, saw the lie. 
He even, Satan even came with the scripture on him, right? But he discerned it was not of the spirit. It was from the father of lies using the scripture on him. So, but in the fasting and praying, like I said in the other video, you can discern those things much more easily. Uh, and also, you have to make sure you have a relationship with God too because you know your father's voice. Even Jesus says that my sheep, uh, they know, the sheep know his voice. They he knows them by name. The shepherd knows them by name. They follow him, right? They know his voice, and they won't follow another voice. They will not follow him because he's a, he's their shepherd. So a false shepherd will come. He will try to deceive you. So make sure that you're listening to the true shepherd of the sheep, which is Jesus. Because yeah, a false shepherd will come many times, even using the scripture, trying to pull you away from the true God and your relationship with him. So you got to be careful. Have that discernment. See, I know them, and they follow me, Jesus says. So Satan will definitely be using the scriptures on you. He will uh, try to separate you from a love relationship with God. He will make you feel worthless. He will also um, make you very sensitive when, when there is sin in your life. And someone may point out that sin in love, obviously, to, to build you up, to give you freedom. And you see it as an attack. And it can go one of two ways. It can lead to this, this, this upset of anger and self-righteousness response. Like, who are you to tell me that? Or the other way that leads to like, oh, man, I'm horrible. I'm such a horrible sinner. Like, God can't use me. God can't forgive me. Yeah, that then see, your relationship in God wasn't strong. And Satan had already planted that in you before the, the, the trial came. He had put that in there so, at some time. You have a mis wrong understanding of who God is. And uh, that leads to this, that will lead you to destruction, especially if God's giving you a vision uh, for something something big. Uh, Satan will definitely be coming at you, even with the scripture, because he knows you love God. So be careful. Uh, also, um, demons are definitely there to try to discourage you. They will try to put depression on you. They will try to harm you. Um, they will try to go after the weakest person in your family, especially during the ministry. Um, your wife uh, may be also a really big target. Um, we see that also they, that the sa that the snake did not go to Adam, did he? Or so they went to the went after the wife, and um, so li what I and when I see William Carey's life, we see his um, biography. And his wife lost his mind, lost her mind, and it says it was due to a mental illness. It was not a mental illness. It was not a mental illness. She was attacked by the enemy because William Carey was doing the work of God. He was translating the Bible in a bunch of different languages. Where the kingdom is being built, Satan will go after you hard, and he, if he can't, if he cannot move you, he'll go after after the next person that's closest to you, which will be your spouse and your children. So that's really important to understand that that you may be strong in the Lord, but your wife and your family must be in the Lord as well, so they can discern uh, the voice of the Lord and the voice of the enemy well, and so that when the enemy comes. Uh, we're able to discern the, the, his voice and know hey, this is not from God and cast him out and rebuke him. Just like, and one, yeah, even through relationships we see with, with Jesus, Peter was one of his closest disciples, right? We see Peter and John uh, always with him, even uh, the other disciples are not there with him. So who would Satan use to tell Jesus, don't go to the cross? Peter. It's like his, his greatest friend, right? His closest friend in the ministry. He will use him too. And what does Jesus say? He says, get behind me, Satan. He's not talking to Peter. He's talking to the demon that is speaking these things into his, into his mind and bringing those things out of him. And sometimes it's, it's even this compassion because Peter didn't want Jesus to speak about him being crucified. And he says, you don't have in mind the things of God, but the things of men, right? Even this human compassion, uh, Satan will also manipulate to try to discourage the man of God from completing his his vision and mission, which was Jesus' mission, was to go to the cross, right? Ultimately. And Satan will use family members, your children, and he would he would even and he will capitalize on also on the human compassion level uh, to say, Oh, you, you need to not do that because of your health and this and that. And uh, Satan can also use um, these things. If your family does not know your call from God, your family doesn't know the vision from God. They're going to tell you to stop because they're not understanding where God is leading you. Peter, 
Disciples didn't understand where the Father was leading Jesus, the cross. They didn't understand that yet. So Jesus had to uh, listen to the Father's voice. Not Peter, not John, not James, not them for counsel. Why? Because they didn't understand where he was going. He had to lead them. And then he says that the whole, I will send the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth, and he will explain to you all things and remind you everything that I've said. So, and Jesus pray, asked many times to his disciples questions because he wanted to figure out what God was teaching them. And Jesus asked to Peter, who do you, who do you say that, that, that I am? You're the Son of God. And Jesus says that it's not flesh and blood that has revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. So Jesus was trying to see what faith was being cultivated, cultivated in his, his disciples, right? That's why he asked them the question. And the thing is that Satan will try to stop that growth, try to hinder that growth. And Jesus, in that moment, when, when Peter was saying, you can't go to the cross, he says, he says that Peter rebuked Jesus, right? Why? Because if he went to the cross, uh, he would set all, all humanity free from the bondage of sin and death. Uh, so... Man, man of God, woman of God, if God's giving you a vision and a mission, you better know it because the people who are closest to you are going to try to stop you. They're going to question your motives. They're going to do this. But understand also that, um, that you need to also explain to them the vision and mission God has given to you. Uh, also, don't just drag them around here and there. Let them know the vision that God has given you. So they can also understand, and God will give them understanding as well. Sometimes they may not be able to receive it yet, but Jesus told his disciples three times that he would go to the cross. Three times. But didn't understand. <laughs> they didn't understand it yet. But still, men of God, women of God, if God's giving you vision, make sure that you are speaking that understanding to your family. And if they're believers, it's much easier, but they may not still they may not fully understand because sometimes God will lead you places that are dangerous, that may not seem very uh, safe, that may not seem very uh, financially profitable. And uh, man, so Satan will try to stop you through your family members, through uh, financial problems, through death of the family, through demonic attacks on your relatives. Yeah, he will do it. Um, but man of God, woman of God, stand firm. And you pray in the power of the Holy Spirit that, that, Jesus, will break the that Jesus will break the communication of Satan on the life of your, of your family. You have to do it on your knees. You have to speak the word of God to your relatives with the love, with the gentleness, with the grace. Because Jesus, Jesus came full of truth and grace for, to his sheep. We must be uh, very mature in when we're sharing the vision from God and leading people. So, And they may not understand it yet, but and Satan will use, try to use them. But they're not your enemy. They're not your enemy. So pray for those people in your life that may be hindering you. And you know, if they're not ready, you still got to obey the Lord. Abraham got the vision from God. He left and he obeyed the Lord and Sarah followed. God didn't give the vision to Sarah. God gave the vision to Abraham. God came to Abraham. God came to Moses. God did, did, didn't come to Moses' wife. He came to him. So if you have a vision from God, then you take up your cross and follow him. And uh, yeah, prepare your life because you're going to get opposition. People will think you're an idiot. People will think that what you're doing is crazy. But if it's if it looks so if it looks easy, uh, the vision is not from God, and Satan will definitely be there to try to discourage you. I remember one time I was I was sick, I was vomiting in the in the toilet, uh, and I had emotions. It's like the second month I was here, I was vomiting, and and I heard him in my, in my I heard him I heard something speaking to me, and it wasn't my relatives. He says you shouldn't be here, go back. And I was like, that's that's not from my heart, and that's definitely not from God, and that's something else. Uh, and the funny thing is, I was in I was in the hospital, and I had an IV in me. And guess what? One of my rel one of my rel one of my brother-in-law said the same thing. He says he should go back to America. He shouldn't be here. And my, my mother-in-law said the same thing. They love me. They want the best for me. But what if God's giving you a vision? You stay there. You stay there. And you finish the mission God has for you and don't let human compassion stop you from obeying the voice of the Lord okay so God bless you and uh, whoever is listening to this I hope this is a uh, good information for you to stand firm in the faith amen